Thanks for watching this video tutorial. It is a free sample from our course, The Ultimate Introduction to V-Ray 4 3ds Max. Make sure to visit our website, mographplus.com, and check the entire course out. This is a massive 17 hour long course. That's 1,030 minutes of high quality and academic video tutorials on V-Ray. Now, let's get started with this video tutorial. In this lesson, we take a look at V-Ray volumetric grid. And if put in simple terms, this is V-Ray's way of importing grid-based cache formats, adjusting their shaders to your heart content and rendering them. At the time being, V-Ray volumetric grid supports three very popular volume formats for generating fire, smoke and liquids. Uh, OpenVDB or .VDB files, Field 3D or .F3D files and PhoenixFD or .AUR files. Probably the most used one is OpenVDB or .VDB files that can be generated in a software like Houdini or directly inside 3ds Max using a plugin like FumeFX. In order to add a V-Ray volumetric grid to your scene in the Create Panel and Geometry tab, choose V-Ray. And here you have V-Ray volume grid. Simply select it and click once in the viewport. As soon as you do that, you will be prompted to select the volume file that you want to render it using V-Ray. Now, here we need to define a file or a sequence of files that are .vdb, .f3, or .aur files. And if you go to uh, openvdb.org and go to their download page and come down to their uh, sample models, you can download some .vdb files. Go ahead and download this bunny cloud file, this explosion, this fire, smoke one and smoke two, and save them somewhere on your disk. Even though we're, we're just gonna be using the explosion file, the fire file, and smoke one. Again, but still try and experiment with the other models. Now I have them in my project files folder, scene assets folder inside a folder called OpenVDB. Just uh, rename those smoke1 and smoke2 files and make sure to remove the numbers at the end of their names so we wouldn't consider them sequential when we load one of these files. In this case, I renamed uh, smoke1 to smoke and smoke2 to smoke puffy. In this case, let's select this fire.vdb file. When you do that, Vray asks you if you like to use a render preset for the file that you are loading. So if you have done the fire and smoke sim in FumeFX, you can use this FumeFX preset. If done in Houdini, use the Houdini fire and smoke preset. And if it is a liquid simulation, you can use Houdini liquid, or you can choose no preset and start uh, adjusting the volume from scratch. Uh, also, we can uh, later on load any of these presets and even use a Phoenix FD preset, but for now, uh, this is okay. Now, as you can see, the file, which is this fire simulation, has been loaded into the viewport, and we can see a preview of what the sim is looking like in the viewport. This is just one single file, and if I go through the timeline, it does not change. If we had a sequence of volume files, we just needed to select the first one, and we already would have loaded the complete simulation into the timeline. First of all, let's make sure it's in the right place and has the right size. So it basically matches with the current lighting that we have in the scene. In the top view, let's move the file and place it close to this dummy object. In the perspective view, increase its scale to 350%. And in the front viewport, just put it on the backdrop and offset it on X axis by five centimeters so it would be centered. Also, let's rename this volumetric grid to V-Ray volume grid underscore fire. If you render the scene right now, we are gonna get render 01. Uh, if uh, there was any warning message about uh, fully visible opacity mode not working with probabilistic shading and Viri asks you to automatically use smoke opacity mode, just press OK. 
in this render even though the fire and smoke shaders are quite off but at least we get something in our render in order to adjust the fire and smoke shaders select the volumetric object in the explorer and in the modify panel and rendering rollouts click on these volumetric options and here you can adjust the fire and the smoke shaders and make them appear correct but before getting into that let's uh, see what options we have in the modify panel and what we can change about our volume here if I open up uh, these rollouts here you can see we have a lot to adjust and understand here but due to the time limit that we have I'm just gonna go through the most important ones in the framing for rollouts you can see some information about the cache file or the volume file that you have loaded uh, we have the container dimension which shows us uh, height, width, and depth of the volume. Uh, we also have this cache file content section and here you can find what are the channels that are saved out in this volume file. For example, this particular file contains uh, a liquid uh, or a temperature channel and a smoke channel and it has about 9 million cells and it might seem too much but it's really not and uh, you know we can't even get a detailed uh, render because the input file simply doesn't have enough resolution but we're gonna work with this file for now next we have the input rollout and here you can adjust the input file or the timing and the speed of the simulation and stuff like that the most important option here is obviously preview and render cache path and here you can define and change your input file the file that we selected uh, when we first created the volume grid basically so I can click on this browse button choose browse again and select my volume data if I want to change it or create a new one I'm gonna skip the rest of these options in this rollout here uh, they are basically beyond the scope of this introductory course and if you are interested you can check out Vira's guide and explore what each option is doing and some of them uh, like play start and play speed are very self-explanatory and most are for when you have a sequential volume data in your scene in the preview rollout you can determine how the volume is displayed in the viewport and the options in this rollout wouldn't affect the final render in any way we have detail reduction as we increase this volume let's say to something like five uh, we get a less detailed preview of the scene in the viewport if you had a very huge volume file with hundreds of millions of cells and your interface became sluggish you can increase detail reduction uh, so to make your interface and viewport more manageable when set to one no detail reduction is performed in the viewport let's set it back to one for now we have auto reduction enables automatic adjustment of reduction in detail due to the detail reduction setting the preview detail will be reduced to the point where the preview will display fast without blocking the interface note that the detail will only decrease automatically but will not increase we have show mesh and if I enable it we see a mesh representation of the volume let's disable it for now in the cell preview section we have only if selected and when this option is enabled you have to have the volume selected to see the preview if you want the volume to be visible all the time simply disable this option we have active view only and when enabled the volume preview will be only visible in the active viewport in this colorful section we can control what we see in the preview we know this cache file only contains temperature and smoke channels first of all let me disable the preview for all the channels I can enable temperature channel and change its preview color and I can enable smoke data and adjust its preview color and we don't have velocity fuel or wavelet channels in this file so let's have them disabled in the rendering rollout we can define how the volumetric grid will be rendered uh, we have render presets and we can choose from FumeFX, Houdini or Phoenix FD presets and if I open up the volumetric options window you can see as I uh, change these presets how the fire and smoke colors are changing and also they affect other render settings in this case let's choose Houdini preset in the mode drop down we can specify the technique that will be used to render the volume data 
Uh, the first three ones are volumetric based and the last three ones are mesh based for rendering liquid simulations. So if the mode is set to volumetric, which is the mode we probably use it most of the time, as you can see in the frame buffer, we get our conventional volumetric render. And if I uh, set it to one of these mesh based modes like ISO surface and create a new simple VRA material in my material editor and apply it to the volumetric grid. Now we are gonna and render the scene, we're gonna have a geometry in the render instead of the volume, which as I mentioned, can be used for liquid sims. Let's set the mode back to volumetric. We have the volumetric options window and here we can control the fire and smoke shaders and the overall opacity of the volume, which we discuss in a moment. Let me close it for now. We have this step size and it is only effective when the mode is set to heat haze or iso surface and basically smaller values will preserve more detail of the volume in the render and higher values will skip some of the cells and might result in less details or artifacts in the render. And using shadow step, you can define how much detail you want in your shadows. Lower values will result in more detail preservation, but higher render time and vice versa. In the frame buffer, the first render was done with shadow step set to 200. And the next one with shadow step set to 10. And we get more detailed shadows in the second render if you pay attention closely. And obviously we need to render the scene for a longer time when decreasing shadow steps to get a clean result. Let's set the shadow step back to 200. In this surface section, if the mode up here is set to one of the mesh based modes, you can determine how the conversion of the grid content into geometry will happen uh, based on what channel this conversion is going to happen and some other settings like that. In the motion blur section, you can define how motion blur effects will appear in the rendering of the volume and you can multiply the effect using this multiplier, obviously. Using this displacement section, you can add more detail to your volume. Uh, this can be useful if you don't have a high res sim but still want to have more detail in your simulation and, and in your render. And the idea of displacement uh, mapping here is the same as displacing a geometry using a VR displacement modifier. You define a map and based on that map the volume will be displaced and you would see more details in your render even though they're gonna seem a little bit fake. So in this case let's enable displacement. use vector as the displacement type open up material editor and add a noise map change the source to world XYZ and size to something like 5 now you can use this as the displacement map. Let's increase the multiplier to something like 15 so you can clearly see the effect. In the frame buffer, the first render was done with displacement disabled and in the second render, it was enabled. Uh, it's a bit exaggerated, but you can clearly see the difference and how this option has the potential to add a lot more detail to your renders. In this case, let me just disable displacement for now. We can open up our volumetric options and start working on the fire and smoke shaders. Let's open it up. In the fire rollout, we obviously control the fire shader and how it looks and also the light emitted by the volumetric grid. The first thing you need to look at is this based on dropdown. And here you can define the source channel that will be rendered as fire. In this case, we only have temperature and smoke channels and by default it's set to temperature, which is correct. In this emit light section, we can control how the light emitted from the fire affects the volume itself and also the scene illumination. We're gonna take a look at these options in a moment. And down here, you can control the overall opacity and a multiplier for the fire intensity. And using this gradient, you can control the color of the fire and using this diagram, you can control the intensity 
or opacity of the fire. Let's add a few color and see how they appear in the render. But before that, let's delete the current points and colors here. Simply select the point, right click and delete the selection, except for this block color maybe. We can click on this expand button and expand the diagram a bit so we can work a bit easier. Also right click and choose fit in view so we only see the data range for the current channel which is temperature and its data range is between 0 and 44, 45. Between 40 and 45 but a bit closer to 40. Double click to add a point and use the following values for R, G, and B as the color of this point. So point nine, seven, eight for red, point eight, four, four for green, and point six, zero, five for blue. Add the second color on 40 and use 0.978 for red, 0.626 for green, and 0 for blue. Basically what we are doing here, uh, if you select the volumetric grid and go to its frame info rollout, you can see the temperature channel that we are currently using as the source for the fire has a data range from 0 to 45. And if you take a look at this diagram here, as you are going from 45 to 0 and change the color uh, colors at that range, we are specifying the color of the fire at its highest point, which is 45. Uh, and to its coolest point which is zero or its lowest point. Uh, I hope it makes sense. Now add another point in 35 and change its color to something like 0.978 for red, 0.482 for green, and 0 0.014 for blue. Click on 25, set the red value to 1, green to 0.122, and blue to 0.036. Now click on 20, use 0.388 for red, 0 0.014 for green, and 0 for blue. Also click on about 7 and use 0.338 for red. 0 0.022 for green and 0 for blue. Now if I render the scene we are gonna get render 0 0.8 in the frame buffer. You can see the colors we have defined are there but this white smoke won't allow us to see the fire very good. So let me go to the smoke color section and change the constant color of the smoke to a dark gray with a value of 75 and if we render the scene we are going to get render 09 and now we can clearly see the fire and as you can see there is a direct translation between the color that we defined in the gradient and the colors that appear here in the fire you can see this brighter yellow colors then we get this yellowish color and this orangish color and those darker colors at the edges the next problem we have is that our fire is not intense enough. 
So let's use the fire multiplier value to make the fire more intense. Let's try 0.6 here. And if we render the scene, we are going to get render 10. Now it is more intense and looks more realistic. Okay, now let's take a look at the most important parameters that we have in the fire rollout. Uh, first, we have emit light. The fire will emit light both on the smoke and on the scene. But if disabled, the fire becomes a simple self-illuminated object and it does not emit any light. In the first render, emit light is on, and in the second render, it is off. And as you can see in this render, the fire isn't emitting any light. Let me enable emit light for now. We have light power on self, and this option controls the power of the light on the smoke. So by changing this value, we don't change the intensity of the fire itself or how much it affects the illumination of the scene, only its effect on the smoke. In the first render, a light power on self was 1, and in the second render, it was 10. And you can see the clear difference that we have. For now, let's leave it at 10. We have light power on scene, which controls the effect of the fire on scene illumination. In the first render, light power on scene was 1, and in the next one, it was 5. You can see clearly the fire affects the illumination of the scene more. Let's set it to 1 for now. Uh, we have fire opacity mode with three options. We have use smoke opacity. Fire will use the same opacity that is set to the smoke in the smoke opacity rollout. This way the fire will not be visible in cells where there is no smoke. Fully visible. This mode fire will always use a opacity of 1 regardless of the smoke's opacity. And when set to use own opacity, a varying opacity can be set for the fire using the opacity diagram. In this case, it really doesn't matter. Let's set it to maybe use smoke opacity, which is going to result in render 17. Uh, we have physically based, which transitions between artistic look of the fire when set to 0 and realistic physically based intensity when set to 1. The realistic mode multiplies the fire intensity by the black body radiation model, which gives strong brightness to the hot parts of the fire. In the first render, physically based was set to 0, then 0.3, then 0.5 and finally point 0.75. In this case, let's set physically base to something like point 0.3. In the smoke color rollout, we can control the smoke shader and how the smoke will appear in the render. In the based on dropdown, we can define the source channel to control the smoke color. By default, it's set to constant color. So, a simple color will be used as the smoke color and this is normally what you use and uh, and in this constant color section obviously you can define the color of the smoke and it really depends on the look that you are after but normally a dark gray color will be enough uh, in the first render smoke color was set to a dark gray with the value of 30 in the next render it was 75 and in the next render, a medium gray color with the value of 150 was used. And you can use obviously any color that you want, um, you know, for artistic reasons maybe. In this case, let's use a dark gray color with the value of 75. Or you can change the source to smoke channel. And now you have this gradient to control the color of the smoke based on the data in the smoke channel and assign different colors to different ranges. And if I render the scene right now, we are going to get render 25. And you can see how the colors in the color gradient are translated into the smoke colors in the render. We're going to use this gradient to produce some beautiful, colorful smokes later on in this lesson. For now, let's set the mode to constant color again. We have this master multiplier, which is a general multiplier for the smoke color. The first render was done with master multiplier set to 1. In the next render, it was set to 2. And finally, 4. You can see we get brighter smokes, basically. Let's set it to 1 for now. Uh, 
um, using shadow strength you can control the opacity of the shadow that the volumetric casts on other objects and finally in the smoke pass you're allowed we can control the overall opacity of the shader uh, by default it's set to simple smoke which uses uh, the smoke channel with some predefined adjustments and in this case you can use this simple smoke factor to make the smoke more opaque or denser so let's try a few simple smoke factors volume in the first render smoke factor was 0.1 then 0.3 0.5, 0 0.75, and 0.95. And as we increase simple smoke factor while you, uh, each time we get denser smoke, let's leave it at 0.95 in this case. Uh, or you can change it to the smoke channel and have a very exact control over the transparency of different data ranges in the smoke channel using this diagram. For now, let's set it to simple smoke. If you come back to the fire rollout, we have this parameter called light resolution. And let me quote Viri Guide on this one. Light resolution specifies the resolution of the light grid as a percentage of the fire grid. Perfect illumination from fire could be achieved by placing an omni light in each fire cell. But this could take a tremendous amount of time to render and is usually not necessary. Uh, for this reason, a separate light grid is created internally which can have a lower resolution than the fire grid. And this light grid is populated with an omni light in each cell. The lower resolution and thus fewer omni lights speeds up rendering at the expense of some illumination detail, which might not always be visible anyway. At a value of 100%, the light grid has the same resolution as the fire grid. Uh, the more this value is decreased, the smoother the illumination will become and the faster the rendering will be. But at very low values, the fire might not blend well with the light it casts on the smoke. Now, in the first render, light resolution was 1%. In the next one, it was set to 5%. And immediately we get more accurate result, as you can see, more accurate illumination overall. In the next render, it was set to 10 and finally 20. Let's, in this case, set, it, set the light resolution to 5. Also, light power on scene to 5. And if we render the scene right now, we're going to get render 38. Okay, that is enough for this shader. Now let's go ahead quickly and work on some other shaders and have some fun. Let me close this window for now and create a new V-Ray volumetric grid. Let's load this explosion.vdb. And adjust its position a bit. If we render the scene right now, we are going to get render 39. Now let's open up its volumetric options and start adjusting the shader. In the smoke color rollout, change the color to a dark gray color with a value of 51. In the smoke opacity rollout, set the simple smoke factor to 0.75. And now if we render the scene, we are going to get render 40. In the fire rollout, you can see the data range for the temperature channel is very limited here. First, let's change the fire opacity mode to use smoke opacity. Click on this expand button, right click and choose fit in view or you can uh, scroll your mouse wheel on the color gradient and zoom in on the available data range that you want. Double click at about 0.8 on X, basically the end of the data range here and make sure it's set to 1 on Y. Also right click on the point and make it linear. Now we have this linear line to control the overall intensity of the fire. Also right click on the color gradient, select all and uh, then delete all the color points. 
double click at about 0.5 and let's choose a hot yellow color like um, 0 0.906 for red 0.554 for green and 0 for blue now click at about 0.45 and let's use a very saturated orange color like 0.993 for red 0.144 for green and 0 for blue at about 0.25 point let's use a very desaturated orange color like 0 0.05 for red, 0 0.009 for green, and 0 for blue. Create a new point at point 0 and set its color to black. These colors and well use that I'm using here aren't magic colors and numbers. You need to experiment with your scene and find out which color and which intensity will work best for your particular volume data. Now let's set the multiplier to something like 10, the fire multiplier. And if we render the scene, we are gonna get render 41, which is not too bad. And finally, we can increase light power on self to 10, light power on scene to five, and light resolution to something like five again. Also increase um, physically base to 0.5. Now if we render the scene, we are going to get render 42. And that's a nice render for now. Let me close these windows and hide this volume grid or volumetric grid. Now let's go ahead and add a new volumetric grid and this time load smoke.vdb which is smoke1.vdb originally this time let's use no preset now increase its scale by 300% rename it to very volume grid underscore gray smoke Place it in front of the camera the way you want. If you render the scene right now without changing anything else, we are going to get render 43. In its volumetric option, I'm just going to go ahead and increase its simple smoke factor to 0.75 and if we render the scene we're going to get render 44 which i think it's beautiful by itself now let me hide it create a copy from it just right click and choose clone and name it pink smoke or something like that now unhide this and open up its volumetric options now in its volumetric options let's have some fun with the smoke color change the smoke color to be based on smoke channel and if you render the scene right now you can see these colors in this gradient right in the smoke right now we can be an artist and choose some fun colors let's change this blue color to a desaturated pink like uh, 0 0.59 0 0.132 and 0.29 let's delete this green point and change this yellow color to a beautiful purple like 0.546 and 0 0.806 And let's change this red color to a more saturated pink like 0 0.835, 0 0.837, 0 0.838, 0 0.839, 0 0.840, 0 0.841, 0 0.842, 0 0.843, 0 0.844, 0 0.845, 0 0.846, 0 0.847, 0 0.848, 0 0.849, 
0 0.096 and 0.351. Let me just push these three points apart a bit. And now if you're under the scene, also let me increase my simple smoke factor to around 0 0.8. If we're under the scene right now, we're gonna get render 46. Now let me hide this volumetric grid, duplicate it and rename it to volumetric grid underscore orange smoke or something like that. We're going to be using an orange color. Unhide it in its volumetric options, change its purple color to an orange color like um, 0 0.878, 0 0.198 and 0.126. Now if you render the scene, you are gonna get this beautiful orange render, which is render 47. Oh my God, I can play with these colors, honestly, all night long. Uh, let's create one final copy and rename it to Viri Volume Grid underscore Green Smoke. Okay, we're gonna have to change some other colors and I'm very sorry, I know you are angry right now. <laughs> but I, I, I mean, I just wanna do it in front of you guys. Okay, let's change some other colors. Uh, change the first color to 0 0.55, point, sorry, 0 0.055 um, for red, 0 0.64 for green and 0 0.5 for blue. Change the second color from the left side to uh, 0 0.173, 0 0.764, and 0 0.777. And the third color to 0 0.096, 0 0.835, and 0.468. Also, let me add a pure blue color at about the end of the smoke channel range for this volume file. And if we render the scene right now, we are gonna get render 47. Now let's go through these final renders and take a look back at all the shaders that we have created in this lesson. As you can see, the render times are ridiculously fast. I mean, that's amazing, even though we don't have any GI in the scene, but still the way a V-Ray handles volumetric data is just uh, amazing and very, very fast. I haven't seen anything like that, honestly. Okay, so that's about V-Ray volumetric grid. It was very fun and hopefully you will learn something. Thanks for watching this video tutorial. It was a free sample from our course, The Ultimate Introduction to V-Ray for 3ds Max. Make sure to visit our website mographplus.com and check the entire course out. This is a massive 17 hour long course. That's 1030 minutes of high quality and academic video tutorial. See you next time, guys.